What is up everybody, welcome back. Yesterday it appears that I got punched a few too many times in the face at my boxing gym. So I'm going to use this opportunity today to uh, take my face off the channel and give you an overview of the Neo Mobile app. I will cover the functionality of the app, how it integrates into your daily life, and a few other extra features that you might not be aware of. I'm also going to have the American version of the Tesla app on screen on some occasions, simply for comparison purposes. When you initially open the Neo app, you are greeted with this screen. The main section up top is a carousel of promoted news items and quick links to information such as scheduling a test drive, understanding vehicle offerings, and more. You will also notice the five tabs at the bottom of the screen. Those tabs include promoted items, chats with friends, your car, shopping, and your own personal information. Because our primary purpose today is to look at the functionality of the app as it relates to our car, we're going to go to the section titled iCha, aka My Car. After you click on this tab, you will see your car front and center. Right away, you can see its estimated range, both in kilometers and its charging percentage. If you make your way up to the upper left-hand corner, you will also see the name of your car. This name is how you wake up your Nomi device in order to interact with her. In my case, I say Ni Hao Lei Feng when I want to talk to my Nomi. Directly below that, you can also see your car status. Currently, my car is parked, so it says parked. It also says the location that it is parked at. If I click that, it takes me to a map of where my car currently is. It also tells me how far away the car is from me, or at least how far away my car is from my phone. Currently, I am at home, and my car is 51 meters away from me. On the top right, we have two icons. The first is car health. Clicking on that gives us information about tire pressure and temperature, and it would also have any notifications about the car's health if it had any adverse conditions. The top right icon has the settings for the mobile app. We'll come back and look at this later. Now let's get into the real meat and potatoes of the app. This is what you will use most often in order to interact with your car. From left to right, we have lock and unlock, ventilate or crack the windows open just a tad, open the boot or trunk, and honk the horn. You can set these to only be used after entering a password if you'd like. Next you have the climate control toggle switch. You can preset your climate control settings customized to your needs. For example, you can choose which seats you'd like heated or cooled. You can also choose whether you'd like your steering wheel heated or not. And of course, you can select the temperature of your car. As I said, you can save these settings to your most often used. That way you can just flick the toggle on the main page instead of going into the options and choosing your temperature and other needs each and every time. If you ever need to deviate from the default settings, just click into the climate control settings and choose your needs for the present time. To the right of that, we have a button to send navigation information to the car. This means that the next time you get into your car, your Nomi will tell you that you have received an address to navigate to, and she will ask you if you would like to proceed to that address. This is a great feature that I really don't understand how Tesla hasn't figured out yet. And yes, I know there are workarounds with Tesla, but it's crazy that it's not built into the app natively. The middle button on the right allows you to move your car forward and backwards only, while not in the car. When you are parked in a tight spot, this comes in mighty handy. It only works when you are within 5 meters of the car and holding the key fob, so it's not a feature to have the car drive to you autonomously. Again, it's only forward and back. Moving down a little further on the main car control page, we have the charging map. You can customize this map however you want. I currently only have Neo power stations highlighted, which means Neo battery swap stations, Neo fast chargers, and Neo destination chargers. You can also, of course, add third-party charging networks as well. If you click on any charging destination, you will get information about that charging station. For example, if I select a battery swap station, I can see how many batteries are currently available to me, how many people are waiting in line, and other information such as once I arrive, how do I get into the station, where do I line up, etc, etc. You can also send the destination to your car with just a touch of one button. When you send the swapping information to your car, it will automatically put you into the queue when you get near the station. If you haven't seen my video discussing that being the best kept secret of battery swap, please check out the link in the description. Next is the dehumidifier. For those of you that live in humid regions like me, this will obviously dry the interior of your car a bit. It does exactly what it says. You can also warm up your battery with the button on the bottom right. This is good for conditioning your battery prior to charging or warming up the battery prior to driving if you live in a cold region. The last button here allows you to remotely start the car. If you are letting your friend borrow the car and you don't want to add him to the approved user list and give him keys, just push this button and tell him to get in the car and put the car in drive or reverse within the next two minutes and he'll be good to drive the car one time. Once he gets out of the car, he won't be able to start it and drive it somewhere again until you push the button and once again give him access. I've never used this feature, but it seems like a good idea if your friend is likely to lose your key. That about does it for the functional buttons relating to your vehicle. Let's move on to the next section, which is related to quick access to Neo service. Here you will also find the charging map. 
Next to that, you have the button to access mobile charging service. You can schedule service for now if it is an emergency, or you can schedule mobile charging for up to a week in advance. From my experience, if you are planning ahead, Neil will contact you directly after you make the appointment and confirm the time, place, and any other details. So if you are planning a camping trip for next week and you know that you won't be able to charge your car, Neil will make sure that they are there to meet you, even in the most remote wilderness, anywhere in China if necessary. You can see my videos about that linked in the description. Next, you will see the flexible upgrade option for your battery. I do not have access to this because I already have the 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. You will notice that it does tell me that once the 150 kilowatt hour pack is available, then this service will be available to me. This is a big advantage of battery swap. If you are in need of a bigger battery temporarily for let's say a road trip, you can temporarily boost your battery capacity. But a few new owners that I've talked to have taken advantage of this service. The next button is my home charger. And since I don't have one, I can't really show you anything here. I was told that you are able to schedule charging times here, just like with Tesla home chargers, but I can't do it, so who really knows? The following section is all about the NEO Worry Free Service, which is NEO's optional insurance and service package. All of these services are free, or I should say included, to any user who purchases Worry Free Service. The first button is to schedule maintenance or repairs, and the button on the right is to notify emergency roadside rescue in case of an accident or collision. Then you've got the tire repair or replacement service, just like you can also see on my channel and linked below. This services comes to you wherever you are located. Besides that, you've also got your 35 coupons for free car washes, designated drivers, and airport valet parking. The Neo app has so many features and sections that it would take us all day to go through each and every one of them. But those that I just talked about are the main things that I wanted to look at with you today, since these are the primary ways that you control your Neo and interact with your Neo through your phone. There are a few other things that I would also like to quickly share. The first one that I'll show you is the range calculator. You choose your car, your battery size, the outside temperature, and if you are using the air conditioner, this will tell you your expected range. You will probably never use this because it is any DC, which is not at all accurate. And because once you've driven your car for a few weeks, you'll pretty intuitively know how much range you can get in different scenarios, but it's still kind of a fun tool to mess around with. There is also a section here to make suggestions to Neo. You are also able to report bugs or say anything else directly to Neo simply by telling Nomi in your car that you want to make a suggestion and Neo will receive it. This is pretty cool and it shows that they always listen to their customers. Now, if we go back to the car control main page and we head up to the settings in the top right, we have a whole lot more that we can look at. I will show you two sections for now. The first is battery management. You don't have the granular control like you do in the Tesla, but you do have the option for either daily use or long distance settings for your charging level. Most people I know primarily just use battery swap, so they probably won't pay too much attention to charging levels, but the options can be found here. You can also set it to precondition your battery prior to charging here. And one thing that I only recently discovered is that you can set it to automatically begin charging at Neo chargers here upon, upon plugging in. I know I've mentioned before in videos that it is not plug and play like Tesla when you go to a Tesla supercharger, but it appears I was wrong. I have probably only ever used Neo chargers maybe five times in the past year or so. So this isn't really something I ever was really concerned with and scanning a QR code isn't really that difficult, but it's nice to know that automatic plug and play charging is here if you want it to be. Another cool feature is the cloud-based photo album. When you ask Nomi to take your photo in the car, she does not automatically send it to the cloud or to your phone directly. You need to go into your car's photo album, select which images that you would like sent to the cloud in order to save bandwidth. After that, you just go here into your app to view images, and then you can download them to your phone. Next, we have two opt-in or out, opt-out programs, I should say. They are Light Up China and the Journey Rankings. Light Up China allows you to check into prominent destinations around China simply by driving near them. You can then compare how many destinations you and your Neo have been to versus the rest of the Neo user community. Together, your goal is to light up the entirety of China, and Neo users are almost there. They've lit up about 99.9% .9 of all prominent locations on the map. Hopefully, Neo will add more in the future. Now, the journey ranking section shows us a lot of stats, many of which I've covered in my one year review video which you will find linked below. It also shows you a ranking of you versus other Neo users when it comes to your power consumption stats, lower is better, and your mileage stats, more is better. The Neo app is actually overflowing with data. It's really too much to get into here, but it is great for anybody who is a big time data head. And now that we are nearly done, I do appreciate that if you've made it this far, you just drop me a like and hit the subscribe button and maybe even comment. Who knows, you might be my 10,000 subscriber. That would be pretty cool. Now let's very quickly check out the other tabs at the bottom of the main page of the app. First is the discover section with news items, as I've mentioned before, but it also has Neo events and activities in your area, and you've also got the latest posts from Neo users. If you didn't know, the Neo app is also a social network. 
So one cool thing about it is, in addition to being able to like and share posts like on other social networks, you can also jadian or add electricity instead of add oil. A kind of a China thing. Forget about that. But this just means that you can give Neo points to other Neo users if you appreciate their content. Neo points, of course, can then be used on Neo Life products online or at Neo House cafes. The second tab along the bottom, we have chats with friends. You have your Neo fellow, who is like your Neo staff consultant advisor person, right there at the top, sticky. And you also have your service group for any service questions you have. And then below the line, you have other group chats. And then, of course, you have chats with other people. Who mutually follow each other. You cannot private message anyone who is not following you back, which is great for avoiding unwanted and harassing messages, which I always used to get on Chinese TikTok until I stopped using that app because it was ridiculous. Next is shopping at the Neo Life shop. If you want to see the types of products that I've got from the shop, you can check the video description for links. Finally, the last tab at the bottom right is the section for my stuff. This shows you how many continuous days you've checked in on the app. It shows your current number of Neo points. And it shows how many posts you've made, your follower count, and more. It also shows you your other kind of Neo points, which are the points that show you your ranking within the Neo community. These are not points that you can use to buy things. And this is a video that I still want to talk about and make another day. But these are points that you get for being involved and participating and being a good community citizen. The higher your ranking, the better chance you have to drive the EP9, for example, or to attend Neo Day. And there's some other really cool prizes and opportunities as well. The rest of the my personal section just has things like your order history, your receipts, your referral code, which, by the way, please use if you plan to buy a Neo, and other sections that again we're not going to cover today. So that right there is your semi deep dive into the Neo app. What do you think about it? Do you prefer it to Tesla's app or whatever app your car currently uses? Make sure you leave a comment and let me know. So thanks for watching, liking, subscribing, supporting in whatever way works for you. Take care, and go Warriors.